It's no secret that my stance on Dax is, how shall we say, controversial. Or maybe it's not. But that's not really the issue. The Chinaman is not the issue here! The issue is that not a single person can tell me why I'm wrong. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Am I wrong? You're not wrong, Walter. You're just an asshole. Okay, I'm an asshole. And? If you can't tell me what specifically about a DAC makes it sound different from another one, then you have no argument. I've discussed my stance for the better part of six years now. It's not on me to explain anything. It's on the people who attack me to specifically state what their case is. Because from where I sit, you don't have one. But just to humor you, I'll start by saying that a DAC is a digital to analog converter. It's meant to do a job, specifically to convert information. More specifically, to convert the ones and zeros that your computer understands, binary information, into language that you understand, analog. And that's it. A DAC is either engineered, duh, with a low output impedance or it's not. Meaning that yes, there is a such thing as a DAC being designed to portray music in an honest light. I.e. it's considered neutral if it has a low output impedance. But it does not make the headphone or music sound any specific way. Any sound differences heard are completely the result of the source slash recording first and the headphones, speakers, or monitors second. A DAC is way down the list of things to take into consideration and any perceivable differences are minuscule and likely just a placebo or a way to justify expensive purchases. In other words, there are countless factors that come into play when you're listening to music, all of which are infinitely more important than a DAC. The headphones and recording specifically have a monumental impact on the way that you perceive sound. Generally, the better your headphones are, the more likely it is that you'll be able to perceive subtle differences in the way an artist engineered a track. But to say that a DAC or amp has a huge effect on these things is disingenuous to say the least. My question for those who make these outlandish claims is, what is it that you think you're hearing? Because not once has a single person who has ever attacked me over this been able to articulate what it is that's radically different from DAC to DAC. And the irony of people telling me my hearing is damaged are likely the same ones jacking up the volume on their 50 watt DAC and then complaining that it's not loud enough. I mean, have you ever mixed down a track in your entire life? Because if you have, you'd know that there's this thing called the audible spectrum, and in it is what you can actually hear. I know, it's wild. So again I ask, what is it that you think you're hearing? Because any element in music, be it resolution, timbre, soundstage, transient response, etc., can be attributed solely to the source and the headphones not the DAC. That's not to say that factors such as signal to noise ratio, total harmonic distortion, crosstalk, and dynamic range aren't important because they are. But they aren't going to make or break a listening experience as say a poorly recorded, mixed, and or mastered track would. For a long time I was of the mindset that the Saber chip from ESS was the only real exception to my rule. That is, I felt as though in comparison to other chips and DACs, it sounded different. Its sense of air, openness, crispness, insert whatever word salad term you want. I believed it and stood by it for many years, both in articles and videos. As it turns out, that was a lie. It was a placebo. Upon receiving a couple of nasty comments on my Q15 article, I decided to reach out to John Sieber over at JDS Labs, an electrical engineer who designs, manufactures, and sells DAX for a living. John and I have been in close contact for a while and I have the utmost respect for him, his business, and his ethos. It's what inspired me to write my own. In a nutshell, I asked him to honestly tell me one way or another, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Here's what he had to say. Stu, I agree. As long as DACs are tuned to be linear and free of distortion, in other words, sign add, signal to noise, and distortion is greater than 90 decibels, there is no audible difference between AKM, ESS, Cirrus, TI chips at identical signal levels. RME must hold the same stance as they freely swap chips without bothering to rename their products. If you are unaware, Synad measures the quality of a signal by comparing the strength of the desired signal to the combined influence of noise and distortion. When it's greater than 90 decibels, it indicates that the signal is significantly stronger than the noise and distortion present in the system, suggesting high fidelity and clarity in audio or radio frequency transmission. 
This level of SINAD is commonly sought after in audio equipment and communication systems for optimal performance and minimal interference. My job would be far easier if differences existed. Swap chips and sell more. The market might even be larger. End quote. Larger? It's already about the size of all the continents put together. He goes on to say, For every audiophile claiming to hear differences between DACs, there are more folks insisting audiophiles are f***ing insane. And he didn't drop the f-bomb. I did. There is no convincing average consumers that DACs matter. Different signal levels lead to audible differences. And I say, hugely important and something I've always talked about. Then there's cognitive bias. And the human brain has an auditory buffer length of about 0.2 seconds. Good luck turning a DAC on in this time frame and never mind having the mental capacity to accurately compare sonic differences between two similar DACs. Well, 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 well. There you have it. Again, remember what we talked about, the audible spectrum, the limitations of human hearing. I don't know how many times and ways I have to say this before it sinks in for you f***ing audiophiles out there. Just take it easy, man. Perfectly calm, dude. Yeah, waving the fucking gun around? Calmer than you are. In the same audio files, harping on audible differences in DAX are the same ones claiming they can hear a fire ant taking a dump in Africa. And you thought I was going to talk about them hearing the grass grow. Well, I wasn't. It's a and even if you somehow comment that John is wrong, guess what? I don't give a shit, and I won't reply. So don't waste your time. It's so fun. John goes on to say. An old Headfire reviewer requested a sample Atom Amp 2 several weeks ago. After receiving Atom 2, he emailed a series of claims convinced it sounded less detailed, but more powerful than his previous Atom Amp Plus. He almost had me convinced with his lengthy prose. Maybe this audio file was onto something, I thought. He shared a downloadable copy of his exact Flack album and urged me to listen to a specific track with the HE6 SE V2s. Our team volume matched two amps and arranged an AB test rig with cables so confusing that no one knew which amp was A and which one was B. We toggled back and forth. Absolutely no audible difference. I couldn't even hear when the switch was flipped. This character later revealed he was listening with a topping DAC paired with an Atom Amp Plus at high gain and Atom Amp 2 at low gain. Of course, the louder one sounded more detailed. I share this story with you because this is the type of person who believes that DACs sound different. He claimed that our listening must be flawed because we're not using his preferred reference DAC. Never heard that one before. You want some? There is no amount of debate that will sway his opinion. It's maddening." End quote. And that leads me to my final point. I believe I'm going mad! We're talking about a highly respected engineer in the amp DAC sphere. It was in part JDS Labs who pioneered these concepts that are largely still ignored today. Just as you can't convince an audiophile that the Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem is an actual thing, we'll probably never be able to do the same regarding DAX and amps. And you know what? That's okay, because at least I finally purged it out of my system. <gasps> Let me know down below, should I continue reviewing and shitting on DAX forever after the 75 plus written about at the time of this video, or should I continue to fight the good fight and die on a lonely hill? The choice is yours.